Good evening, ladies and germs, uh, for your viewing pleasure and entertainment stroke education. Today, I'm going to be testing some ancient battery packs. No, if you're looking for something from the 1950s, that's not going to happen. I mean, throwaway generation ancient things. Battery packs are about eight years old. I was looking online at some uh, battery tests specifically AA rechargeables and people uh, testing them for capacity against their claimed capacity kind of thing they all came out pretty much okay but what they couldn't test was um, a really old battery pack so you can test their lifespan in terms of years not just capacity that's only we're in the loop on that be seen on is that just blurry it doesn't matter what's that say bk3 mcce that's one of the newer end loops um panasonic end loops but that's not what i'm interested in i'm interested in testing old battery packs don't laugh <laughs> now you can see that's still in pristine condition as it were when they came out of the factory uh, this battery pack is at least eight years old so it um, preceded me before I started my current current job it was there when I started about eight, eight years ago and it's probably a fair few years older than that can I spin that around? can I see who made that what does it say there I'm sure I've seen it said I'll take one out of the pack for in a minute if you can have a look at it. Okay, so that's an ancient battery pack, and we're going to have a test on those. That's it. Do not put that down there for a second. So I know for a fact that this battery pack hasn't been used in a year and hasn't been charged. Do do do. That in there for over a year. Let's see. 10.16 volts from 9.6 pack not too bad okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to test these and see how they uh, have see how they perform considering the, considering their age uh, what's one saying I've gone I'll come back to that in a sec I was thinking when I was planning this video in my head, forget a certain figure, what does it actually mean? Um, I was thinking I'd need to have something to compare it to. So, I've also got one of these. These are lacrosse batteries. Again, they're at least eight years old. And this one's used on a, on a regular basis doesn't look as bad as this one because this one bears the scars of time and work a bit like me so let's test that one I know this has been charged about six months ago something like that we use it to test LED strips and test the colors that kind of thing so compare a voltage and that that's 9.2 which is a whole volt lower than the any loop pack let's say that's been recently charged and I've dug out a pack of these. Again, they're at least eight years old. These are Vapex make. Um, 2700, these are just standard rechargeables. But the Enerloop is the low self discharge one. I think it's a lacrosse one. Maybe a standard one as well. So for testing, I've borrowed one of these is a Technoline charger independently charges discharges each cell so I'm going to test these in banks of four and the whole cycle will probably take something like nine ten hours I mean, to charge discharge and charge them up again at least that'll give me some numbers to work off just bear with me so I've set up the charger there with the elevation control device behind it so you can see it. I don't know if I showed this up close, did I? More focus now, thank you very much. 
that is a HR3UTG that is hold on I've got a, a sheet of paper just a word about this Enloop 101 if you have a look at their, their website lots of information there so just, where is that now double A 3UTG 2005 onwards so these end loops are between 8 and 13 years old let's put them to the test okay ready for a test I've marked these 1, 2, 3, 4 in the banks as they are 1, 2, 3, 4 from left to right those and then I'm going to set the Set the mode first. Not charge test. Come on. Ah, charge test. That's what I want. I'm going to set the current at. It's already set on 500 milliamps. So charge at 500. Discharge at 500. And we'll come back to that in about, as I say, 9 to 10 hours. So that's the first set of four cycled. I put a piece of paper across there. I'm going to say something first. You saw me set the current at 500 milliamps. I assumed that would uh, apply to the discharge as well, um, but it doesn't seem to. That uh, 500 milliamps only is for the charging. It looks like the default um, discharge on this is 250 milliamps, which is less than the 375 optimum for these inner loops so with that in mind before I show you the figures any guesses yes sir you at the back about 1500 I'd been happy with 1500 get on with it I'll get on with it I'll show you wait for the ta-da Ta-da! You see that from there looks a bit far away from me. Oh, it's showing full at the moment. There we go. 1822, 1817, 1865 and 18 something else. It's going to look to full again. Not bad, is it? Not bad at all. I'd expected, well, I'd hoped for about 1500, 1800. <laughs> More than happy with I'll try not to draw any conclusions until I test all the batteries. I know what some of you are thinking that I put some new batteries in there and substituted them for the old ones once they're charged. Some new ones. I can assure you that's not the case. Because as soon as you pull one of these out, pull that one out, then all the data is lost on that one. So if it, and if I put if I put it back in, it'll just it'll just shut full again. It'll give me capacity on that one. No, it just says full. So no trickery involved. This as they are. It's number four. Number three. Number two. And number one exactly as they went in okay with that new message about I'll get another bank of four in so just a quick word about the next set of four I'm going to be putting in I mean, these are even manky than the other one that's what happens when your boss uses brown flux jelly on everything when you're soldering <laughs> that's what they look like okay let's do that one Seven, eight, six, number five, same as I did last time, hopefully. Okay, set the mode. Discharge, charge test, I think. Charge test, set the current, seven, not too much. 500. There we go. Are we happy with that? Good. Back to in about 14 hours when they're done.
that's the second set of four running loops done. The figures are about the same. It's like balance cells. <laughs> They're all about 1800s. Okay. Um, right, so on to the next ones. I didn't notice until now, and it's the, these lacrosse ones I'm going to charge. Two different sets in there, I've got 24s and 26s. Luckily I've got, I've got four, of, four of each, so I'm going to put those in. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to say. These lacrosse ones in both sets. It looks like some fluid damage on the top of these. They haven't been sitting in a puddle or anything like that there. I think they've just leaked chemically. Both sets are the same. These are 2400 as well. There's a wetness around the top of it. I'm going to test them anyway, see what happens. I'll just show you these. Of them. This is the same as they went in. Six and five. I need to take put these back in the pack. So I've got to go to work in half an hour. I'm going to be needing these. Put those in the pack. Right. Let's do the cross ones. Four. Three. Two. One. The same parameters again. Oh, there's a charge test. Oh, where's my specs gone? Where's my head? This one. Can't find them. It's a bit dusty in that as well. Charge test on that. Can I say current? Damn, too late. Hold on. Put the plug out. Start again. Uh, mode. Charge. Oops, no, that one. Charge test current 7500. Okay, back in a few hours. At long last, these are finished cycling. I started these at 9 o'clock yesterday morning. I checked about midnight and it was still going. It's now 9 o'clock this morning. Okay, so we're ready for the test. Any guesses? To be honest, I expected these to fail and fail big time because of the physical or rather chemical condition or chemical damage of them. Ready for look. Can we see that? Oh, come back to full again. What do we have? 2,240, 2,230 and 2,230. Go back to full. What was the last one? 670. Okay. We'll have to qualify that as a fail. It's handy with these charges. I mean, those, those three, two thousand two hundred forty, three of them more or less. That is an amazing result for something that's old and seems to be that damaged. But that one six seventy. I mean, that would be a fail if you put them in a pack of four. Plans use four of those. If you're using the standalone batteries, that's amazing. Okay, so without any further mucking about, I'm going to get the other four in and report back in the 24 hours. This is a quick mid discharge um, display for you. I realize I told you that the discharge rate was, but didn't actually show it. Forgive the fingers and thumbs. Let me see that there. I'll cycle through this display. That's showing current voltage. This one there is the only one that's currently still discharging. The rest have finished. So that's voltage. Milliamp power is nothing there to show because it hasn't finished yet. 3.46 hours. That must be time of discharge. 255 milliamps that's what it's currently discharging at the door with the same what's that you want to see the rest it's like kids at Christmas Eve okay you can have one but no more that's showing what it's charging at the moment it's giving milliamp hours 
three four volts and again 1256 so my faith in the battery gods have been restored somewhat so that is worse than the um, well there's only three of the others one of them was a failure okay you'll have to wait till tomorrow then for the rest of them well, this is the last installment for these you saw that one last night, 12.56 and the other one came out and it's come back to full was it 16 something? 16.15 yeah. okay I'll remove the camera obscura again drum roll it's like pop master what was that, 20 something? Two of them, 28 and 29, had to happen eventually. Okay, so that's why my lacrosse pack was lower voltage in the end loop pack. This probably explains why when you put any load across it, it quickly became a 7.2 volt pack, because these two quickly collapsed. Okay. What am I doing with my Vapex ones? Okay, I'll find those. Oh, bear with me. And the next ones, or rather last ones, the Eagle Eyed with the CDs hiding, they were <laughs> over there somewhere. Um, one of these, or at least two of these, looks like they come from landfill already. But I promise you, they've had an easy life. So it's in charging at the moment, 500 milliamp. I'll keep this brief. This video is already about probably going to be about 20 minutes long already, which is far too long. I'll come back to them when they're done. And finally, last test done. As you can see, not half bad. 2270, it's gone off again. 2230, I believe. 2220. Not bad at all, I class those as good. Considering they, I thought they'd be just be fit for the skip. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, th this test <laughs> starts off on Saturday and it's now Thursday morning. Shows how long these take. Um, just wanted a quick note on this, probably important. Um, all of these cells are tested, in loops and those and those. They've all had an easy life. Probably less than 20 charge discharge cycles altogether. So, um, I was going to say, oh yeah. Um, one of these I had to throw out a couple of years ago, I wasn't holding a charge, I'm going to hold that against it as well. I'll do a little spreadsheet for the conclusion. And here is the deluxe spreadsheet, I promised you. All the figures there from three tests, all the inner loops, all 1800s, let's do this briefly, about 95% of capacity, excellent, what else can you say? That's why they're expensive, they last the years. The lacrosse ones, not bad. Three eighths of them were okay. Uh, about 80% of the capacities. The rest were poor to abjectly awful down the bottom. And the Vapex ones, I think most surprisingly of all, didn't expect that at all. There's only small sample size though, um, only three compared to the eight of the others. But that's all I had, and they returned figured they have there about 84 percent average of their capacity let's get that out of the way i've got some other vapex ones here as well in charge because i was concerned that i only had three to charge these up with this is just an aside it's just not in the test because so, i know these vapex ones are are good batteries anyway let's have a look at this bag these are 2900s Give me what 2009 3 amp hour 2.5 2.2 .2. again it's just a supplement to that three i know these are okay with all that testing done and the results in i just wanted to say that uh, there's a reason for my doing this uh, that and these tests when i'm in work mode people ask What's the difference between end loops and the batteries? Why should I buy them? And my stock answer usually is without 
knowing properly, it's just what I've been told, is that any loops last here for years, um, longer lifespan than uh, than other batteries. I don't know if it was true, but no, I haven't done this test. I know it's to be true. Okay, what else do they have? Back in a sec. Yes, uh, one final fact I wanted to share. Say in my working life, I've probably made about four to five thousand end loop battery packs. Things like four cell, five cell, eight cell battery packs. Four to five thousand, and I've only ever had one back out of all that lot because of a faulty cell. I think that tells you everything you need to know, especially about end loops. So I believe that's it from me. As always, if you found this interesting or useful feel free to buy me a kebab if you found it excruciatingly dull and painful let me know so why are you still watching until the next time